Welcome to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. In every episode, Mark interviews others to share stories of thought leaders who inspire others by making a difference. You can find this show on www.videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. Now here's the host of Inspiring Business, Mark Bullock. Welcome, and today my guest is my longtime friend and client, Lily Vasilev. Lily is a mediator, a divorce financial expert, and the author of four books on finances as they relate to divorce. Welcome, Lily. It's so great to have you. Thank you, Mark. Well, terrific. So I, we were talking a little bit before we started recording that, you know, I created Inspiring, the Inspiring Business Podcast for people like you. And what I and what I I've been impressed with you since the first time that I met you. It's, it's, wow. it's been more than a dec more than a decade ago. You were speaking at a, a, at a divorce financial conference, and um, what what impressed me so much beyond the almost ridiculous level of certifications and experience, mm -hmm. et cetera, and, and knowledge that you have, is that you do all of that. And you went through all of that and you and and you live into the world of making a difference for people when it comes to their finances and in specifically in a divorce um, and then beyond that. But would you share with us your story of how that came to be? I mean, how does that, you know, you, you, you're you're as you're at the pinnacle as far as I'm concerned of this world. So. Okay, we're all done now. That, that's as good as it can get. <laughs> you know, with with seriously speaking, with any passion, there's always a story behind it. And, you know, it's a story that's born through a lot of experience or pain or a journey. And mine is no different than many, many, many of my clients. And it began with a divorce uh, many years ago when we didn't have alternative dispute resolution processes available to the average person. And I went through litigation and I can remember thinking to myself, this is the worst experience I hope I will ever have. I was a financial expert then at a very young age and in the corporate world. And I was teaching my attorneys about finance as we were negotiating my agreement. And I thought to myself, if I'm teaching them, there's something wrong with this picture. And after that, I remember I had my two little children. I mean, they were really tiny. And one of them was already going to go into therapy. And I sat outside listening and I listened to all the other parents and mothers who were going through this divorce process saying that they were traumatized paralyzed with fear, had no idea what was going to be the outcome and couldn't even look past the moment that they were there. Right. And again, something just stirred inside me and I got that rage of where you think, how is that helpful? Isn't it even more destructive to a family to have that experience with no no parameters for support. So um, some very clever people, to make a long story short, kind of guided me into talking to divorcing parents about how to find the skills that they needed going through this process. Because divorce is life's major transition. There's nothing else like it. It touches every facet of your life. It will touch your legal, your financial, your emotional, and your psychological. And if you don't have guidance or support mm -hmm. or encouragement or even an opportunity to learn how to be accountable for yourself, it's very destructive and it ripples through generations in time. And you see children of children of divorce kind of aimlessly going through these financial problems in their own relationships because they don't have any skill sets. So I became the raging lunatic that said, you know what, there's gotta be a better way. And many years ago, started this whole thought process about creating divorce financial planning. Mm -hmm. And no one knew what it was. I made it up as we went along and happy to say thousands have been trained and have learned 
what divorce financial planning is all about, to complement and supplement whatever legal process exists for divorce so that people come out better. They have better outcomes. They have a roadmap. They have a sense of confidence. That's what it's all about. I, 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 I so... I don't know if you if you know this, but you know we drank the mediation Kool Aid uh, a, a long time ago, um, and and I often say you know I think that the entire industry needs to remove the word alternative uh, from alternative dispute resolution because I think dispute resolution should be the goal. It should be the first place to start rather than going to war uh, in the first place. And I know that you're a trained mediator, and I know that you mediate as well, and and of course you work with a lot of mediators, but you also work with um, uh, those who aren't in the mediation process that are in, are in a in a um, either a settlement or even potentially lit, uh, a litigated uh, type type of divorce. Um, but regardless of the path that people choose, why do they need the divorce financial planning, and and how is it designed to really to fit them regardless of whatever path they're on? So this is, this is the greatest question you can ask. In all sincerity, what is, what is divorce about? It's about money and children. And you don't learn finances in law school. There are excellent attorneys who know finances very well. But coming from it from a pure financial perspective and having the information on taxes, estate laws, on investments, on you know, the whole wider spectrum of skill sets specific to making financial decisions is is so important in this process. And, you know, the, the biggest regret I hear from my clients, and this is across the board, it doesn't matter what process they're in, whether it's mediation or collaborative or litigation, the number one regret I hear is I feel like I was coerced too soon to make my decision. Mm. I don't think I had enough information. I'm not prepared. And what does that mean? That means you're sending people out there having second thoughts. And that's not good for anyone's business, believe me. And it also creates the sort of that expectation that divorce hasn't really been dissolved, resolved to your point, Mark that there, there's too much that's left open and untouched or unaddressed or is ambiguous. And now, are you kidding? Now that our lawyers are gone, we have to figure this out between ourselves? Yeah, not, not a good situation. So my role as a divorce financial planner in the divorce arena is to give the opportunity to educate, to provide the encouragement that people understand what the decisions are and that they feel that they are ready to make those decisions because they are fully informed. And that sense of confidence in knowing all of the options, both the pros, the cons, the short and the longer term implications of some of those decisions is absolutely essential for you to say, okay, I've explored it. I understand it. I might not get all of it, but at least I'm aware of the issues. And now I know what I can do. Because you know, Mark, in divorce, a lot of these financial decisions are one-time decisions, right? There's no do-overs. Like you right. can't come back to the table and go, "Oops, I didn't understand," you know, what that meant. Mm -mm. So, so really, as a divorce financial planner in this arena, I gather the information. I'm going to analyze it for my clients. I'm going to help them understand it, and I'm going to help them understand the forever impact right? That, that whole ripple effect mm -hmm. and help them make sure that all of those other distractions that are happening, whether it's the behaviors of the professionals, if it's the behaviors of the spouse, right. if it's a surprise that completely was unanticipated that happens, right? You know, it's one of those senses of an imploding bomb that hits the table. Um, if you have mis mismatched expectations of what outcomes are being, all of that plays into financial financial decision making. And with experience, you understand it's not just number crunching. It's navigating this whole very complicated um, foundation for the rest of your life to get you through the finish line 
right. and to give you the roadmap to go forward. And all that being said, you know, I think a lot of people just don't don't automatically gravitate to look. It's better to know now. <laughs> it's ne- it's better to know going into than 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 waiting before because is is it not true? And I've heard this from other mediators and other finan- financial people, and and from you, you know, so many times a couple comes comes into the divorce arena. They've decided that they're that they're going to divorce. And one of them has been mostly handling the finances and the other one hasn't. And so there's really an imbalance. Um, and that is it not true that part of what you're doing is, is trying to bring them more, more in line with educating and, 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 um, uh, and raising that confidence that the person who hasn't been as deeply involved in the finances um, up to speed, as it were, so that they have the knowledge, the understanding of exactly what you're saying, the impacts of their decisions that they're making now, both in the short term and in the long term, because after all, they're putting together an agreement that's that they're going to have to live into moving yeah. forward in their separate lives and their set and their separate lives. If they're not working together to some extent, if they're not on the same page, um, as far as the finances go, it's it's what a disaster you know awaits them. It's it's more than an imbalance of knowledge and or experience. Sometimes it's very different values. Sometimes mm. it's about things that you never expected happened. So for you know I have lots, I have lots of stories, but you know for example, um, I speak a lot about. Uh, divorce, gray divorce over the age of 50, because that happens to be the, the, the single uh, segment of the population that has increasing rates of divorce. For the rest of the population, it's pretty stagnant at the moment. And this seems to be exploding. And in fact, it's like quadrupled in the last decade. And in this area of, of couples, what comes to the table is fascinating, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes with the, the less less experienced spouse or the spouse who hasn't been necessarily in the workforce, they will find out that what they thought they were saving for retirement may or may not be there. They will find out that the debt they thought was being paid off has or hasn't been paid off or that they can't afford to send their youngest out of four children to college because now they're dividing their assets. And gosh, I need to leave, live on that asset. And I'm sorry. I'm thinking of myself first, taking that oxygen mask first, and then worrying about my child. It, huge amounts of differences become absolutely crystallized and and polarizing at the table. So it's not just that I haven't dealt with money or made long-term investments. It's a lot deeper than that. And every story is unique of every couple. Um, I've seen people who have been fairly stoic and say, sure, you know, talk to my spouse, tell them anything that they need to know. And then all of a sudden we come back and we ask a few questions and they completely fall apart emotionally. Like I've carried the burden of this family for so long. I don't know how she's going to react. And now she has to step up to the plate and I'm embarrassed because I don't have enough savings or I didn't earn what she thought I would be earning. And I'm being a little bit gender biased here, but in later couples, it tends to be that way. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a very emotionally charged journey on the finances when there have been surprises exposed, when there have been, when there has been a lack of communication, which is generally the reason for a lot of these divorces. Yeah. And they just don't talk about money. And guess what? In divorce, that's the first thing you start talking about. So it's, it is a juggling act. It's a balancing routine where you learn language. You have a skill set trained as a mediator or as a neutral or as an advocate and how and when and to the extent that you intervene makes a huge difference on the outcome of that person's experience in the divorce process. So 
what I'm pulling from what you're saying is that it's not just the numbers. It's not, <laughs> it, right? It's never just the numbers. Right? It's, it's yeah. not just the numbers and it's not yeah. just that somebody might be hiding numbers or somebody yeah. is, is, uh, is embellishing on numbers or, you know, it, it's not just how are we going to divide, you know, the, the, the assets. It really is. Um, and, and why I know that you're, you know, a trained and experienced mediator along with a financial uh, being a financial expert, because as these things come to the surface, which basically in a divorce, everything comes to the surface. Right. Yes. yes. And, 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 and that might be, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 years of a lifetime together that there's been stuff that's not come to the surface before you're there to be a guy and you're, and you're there to, to, to help them, dare I say, manage the emotions that are, that, that are naturally going to come, come out of that. Um, along, I'm, I'm, along with other professionals in a collaborative environment and yeah. et, et cetera, but um, you're, you're not divorced from uh, you know, the money's not divorced from the emotional impact no, of no. what's been happening. It's not. And I and I would say, you know, it's really fascinating. Um, I've learned this over the years. I have a lot more to learn. It's facilitating the communication between the spouses mm. and having them actually listen to one another for the first time many times. And right. and, you know, often when I work with very high net worth individuals, they've never had that conversation. You know, they've tried to explain basic things and then they get frustrated, but it's, it's deeper than that. It it's why have they chosen that path? How responsible did they feel? You know, is there, is there gratitude to be expressed for what they have? Um, and then for the individuals that have very limited resources, how are we going to maximize these? for both of us, for two households from one, what's the most important priority we could agree on so that we can then work from there out, outward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that to me is really the passion. That's to me the joy of it because I can see people and I know they sometimes call it transformative. I don't know if I would go that far in every case, but I can see the shift in the perception between the spouses of how they handle the issues that have to be resolved. I mean, they have to be resolved. You're going to get divorced one way or the other. And this is, you know, your opportunity to work it out. And that's the most compelling part of why I do what I do. So you've written four books <laughs> and, yeah. I'm a, and, and I, I can only assume that those books are, to, are designed to help people who, Maybe approaching, maybe, maybe somebody's just kind of researching now. They 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 realize that it's not working out, and maybe I should maybe I should be considering a divorce. Um, I really don't know the finances that well, or maybe I'm the one who has been in charge of the finances, and I'm really concerned that my my spouse that I'm going to be asking for a divorce from is is now going to have to have to deal with, you know step up to the plate when they're, when they're unprepared to step up on, to the plate. Yep. yep. Would it make sense for, for, for somebody to, to grab one of your books and, and, and which one should they grab? Well, um, thank you. You're lovely. Um, I was actually invited by the American Bar Association to write their first and only book, imagine that, on money and divorce. And it is exactly that. It's what do I do first? Step one, two, three. Every chapter could be taken in and of itself. And it's the the whole point of how you prepare and they always say you know preparation is the first step and it's the best offense and i completely believe this the more you can prepare yourself in every aspect not just financially but for understanding what the process will look like and smell like and feel like you know ahead of you will save you that piece of where you're just paralyzed. You know, hopefully it will lessen that because you're going to find resources. You're going to know what to do. So that book, Money and Divorce, is a step-by-step. -step. From the moment you think about divorce or you might think or smell or suspect that your spouse is thinking of it, what do you do and what do you need to learn about? The other books are the um, 
kind of fun books. They're like divorce financial planner, like wedding planner, divorce financial planner. And they're, and they're notebooks and they're little um, books that you take with you to interview professionals, to collect information that you will need in order to prepare yourself for the divorce process. And they're meant to be fun and updated and changeable and, um, absolutely a hundred percent practical and you shove them in your car in your trunk i've heard people say that you know in the most unusual places i won't share that um of where they have their notes and and that's what they do so uh and i think one other book is on, on uh connecticut divorce and it's specific to connecticut and it has all of the different processes of divorce mm. as well as the financial piece on it fantastic Fantastic. So they can, they will obviously have links associated with this, with this podcast, whether you're watching it or listening to it. Um, but uh, where's the best place to, to, to start? Which, which book makes the most sense for somebody to. I, I think money and divorce It's the most comprehensive. It's the best and most thorough book I ever found on finance. And I don't say that for me because I was the last one who wanted to write this book. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking there are zillions out there and literally there aren't. And I was completely surprised. So this is actually all about finances and the processes and what you need to do and what the phases are to help you through it. Okay. So they can get this through your website or through Amazon or through booksellers? With, with All of the above. So you can go to my website, wealthprotectionmanagement.com. You can go to amazon.com and you will find all my books on these two sites. Terrific. Terrific. So the other thing that you do that inspires me is that you do things like this. You give away the information or you make it so inexpensive through a book, et cetera. But you've been you've been recording videos for a while now. And I know that you've, you've got quite a bit of content out there. I know that there's quite a bit of written content that you've done again, you know, tied in with your website and, and your and your social media presences. But part of. Um, part of your journey was in creating videos and really kind of figuring out where to start with that and how, how, to, how to make that happen. Because yeah. those of us that are trying to make a difference in the world are trying to make a difference with the content that we create as well. Um, and so we had created, uh, we had been working with you and a whole bunch of other people on the written blog posts, the written short articles, you know, to, 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 to help people, um, find out information and, and move forward and, 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 to, and to present ourselves as, as experts through the giving away of knowledge and information and educational materials that, would, that are valuable to our clients and to our prospective clients, as, as an example. And that was phoneblogger.net. And if you have an interest or want some help in that arena, phoneblogger.net is, is there for, for, uh, for those of you that want to um, engage in that consistent uh, production of textual content. And then uh, from that, we realized video was taken over social media. Um, it allows people to see, hear, feel our energy, et cetera, across the screen. Um, and that is nerve wracking for those of us that did <laughs> not have experience on camera. And so we created a process called Video Socials. And it's exactly that. We get together in small groups and we take turns recording videos and we give each other feedback in that process. We get the practice, we get the, the technology is handled for us, et cetera. Um, and your video socials member and, and Lily, what, what are you getting out of that? I started and I was terrified. And then the routine, the consistency, and the support of my colleagues in this um, group makes it just an amazing experience. I mean, it's it's like I looked forward to it every single week just to jump on there and listen to the others present their videos, and then we would um, constructively comment on them. And over time, I hope I got better, but it it's just, it's, a very valuable experience. I will say this for two reasons. One, because it gives you a presence on a camera so that you're not terrified to be on camera and, and helps you uh, really frame the topics succinctly. And that's very important for media and it's very important for marketing. Secondly, and more importantly for me, I loved the camaraderie of the group. And these were professionals from all different disciplines. 
Um, and it was just so reassuring and so amazing to have their support, their delight, their um, enthusiasm to help you grow on this medium. And, and you know, it's, it felt like family. Um, I think it's a brilliant effort on your part, Mark. I love it. Um, I cannot wait to return to it. And uh, I have now, as you mentioned earlier, a legacy. I've created a legacy of information of for free for anybody. And how else could I have done that? So, yeah, I love video socials. Thank you so much. And, and you and every other member that we have is who we learned from and how we, and how we created it. Yes, I had the seed of, of, of what I thought it could be, but what makes video socials is the social ass, is the people that, 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 that are yes. involved. And, yes. and thank you for bringing that apart. And if that's something that's interesting of interest to our audience, if you're trying to figure out how you can consistently get content out there that makes a difference for the world. Um, we'd love to have you as a guest at Video Socials. There's no cost, there's no obligation. Just go to videosocials.net and click on the guest tab at the top of the screen, the RSVP for whatever meeting that's, that's coming up. We'd, we'd love to meet you. Um, and then as an extension of that and, and the, the actual process of what we're doing today in this video podcast, this video interview podcast, is our most recent service, which is videointerviewpodcast.com. And um, essentially, I've got a whole team uh, that is part of this service that is pulling all this together and handling the invites and handling the information and handling the rescheduling, handling the technology of running uh, running this recording session is going to be handling this, the process of getting it out to all the different social media platforms and podcast platforms, et cetera, et cetera. So again, if you're you've been thinking about doing a podcast, we'd love to have a conversation with you um, and you can get information uh, at videointerviewpodcast.com. So all of that said, and we've talked extensively about, and we literally could go on all day, but <laughs> we've talked extensively about finances and divorce and, and, and what people need to know and what they need to be planning for and, and, and why they need to be talking to a professional like you and not just trying to figure it out on their own or leave it to their attorney, which may or may not have um, the actual financial knowledge that is, is needed to be brought to brought to play. But how have you applied all of this to non-divorcing clients? Interestingly, it's becoming more and more popular uh, mm. to use the skill sets that I have from uh, being trained in mediation, from being trained as a neutral, but from being trained as an advocate and experiencing where all the really heavy spots are in divorce of trying to preempt that to save marriages or for those entering into marriages. So uh, sort of another, uh, what do you call it? A, a feather in my cap is to look mm -hmm. at marital mediation for those individuals and couples who really love each other and yet, can't find their way straight over money issues. Mm. Um, it's become very, very much a growing field of marital mediation. And this is an effort of where you, I use my same skill set, but now we're giving guideposts. Now we have the bumper pads on where you need to have your roadmap, right? And how often and how and when and to what degree do you always have a neutral or a third party as a resource when things get sticky or bumpy or whatever. Um, that's just one tool. Another one is, you know, prenups and postnups. I work with families, I work with couples who need to have the expression of what's important to them in terms of financial issues. And then to understand that maybe this is really a communication tool that it doesn't have to be black and white and fixed in stone and shoved in a drawer and never found until 15 years from today, but that actually it's the start of a better foundation.
for handling money relationships between the two of you. And if you approach it from a more positive side, and I try this as hard as I can with couples and, and try to make it more of an optimistic exercise mm. in the sense that we're grabbing the issues now because we know that there's going to be conflict or challenge going forward. How will we address those conflicts and challenges? And this will give us the way to do it. Right. That's how we approach it. And, and so I'm really interested in this um, and have been actually working with a lot of Gen X people as well as baby boomers to see how to resolve the issues before they do become conflicts. And you have to take that first you know, tug at the thought of divorce. Sometimes it's not going to work, but that's fine. At least you're better informed as you enter into the divorce. Absolutely. And, and I love the fact that it's like, you know, even if it's starting to become a conflict, right? So it, it, it's, you know, you did what? <laughs> That's right. We don't have what? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Et cetera, right? So um, I love the fact that, you know, it's you're, you're taking this approach of, of, of basic, basically preempting what could become the grounds for, um, you know, a dissolution of marriage in one form, one form or another because, Maybe that's not the place to start. Maybe the place to start is, well, let's look at what's actually going on and how we can manage it moving forward um, um, so that the choice as to whether or not to stay married or get divorced is not totally dependent on the fact that we're in, we're, we're in different, we're in different levels of understanding and we've got stuff that's been hidden or we've got stuff that's been miscon misconstrued or misunderstood. Let's get it on the table by somebody. And it sounds like what you're doing is, is you're acting as that neutral party. You're not taking sides necessarily. Correct. No, 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 correct. Uh, only as a neutral. And right. you know what? It's, it's almost a litmus test to see, can you rebuild the trust in the relationship? Right. I mean, that's Perfect. where it's coming from. And Perfect. if you want to make the effort, and if you really want to make that Perfect. effort, then that's what, you know, we can work on. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to, to hear about that because it's, it, frankly, it's, it's helping people prevent taking steps, you know, I don't want to say off the cliff, but, you know, yeah, taking off the boxing gloves and deciding that there's, there's no future for us. Um, when there might actually be, because I, I just, I just love the fact that you're doing that. So again, we could go on all day, Lily, but you did have a couple of people and I know that you've got many people in your orbit that make a difference as you do in whether it be in law, whether it be in finance, whether it be in, in, in mediation and uh, conflict resolution. Um, but you had a couple of people that you kind of wanted to give a shout out to that you thought might also be a good fit for well, this is from my video socials club and i just wanted to give a shout out to melissa goodstein and ivan alter who are divorce attorneys that will only do collaborative divorce and mediation and they make a big difference in their clients lives and i see how professional they are in this practice and i'm just grateful to be a part of whenever they're working on a case um to be a part of it, to see the difference that they do make. So they're terrific attorneys. Fantastic. Well, and I look forward to, look forward to uh, um, having a conversation with them to see if they, if uh, this is something that they'd like to do as far as we, we designed this show for exactly, you know, you and for others that make a difference in the world through what they provide as their profession. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much, Lily. And um, please go to Amazon, go to Lily's website. Again, there'll be links are, are, are all going to be associated with uh, with this. Um, and uh, you've got a treasure trove of information, I know, on uh, YouTube and, and through the website, et cetera. Um, so uh, that you make available for free. It's it's just it's just out there. All, all that people need to do is take a few minutes to go to go have a look and um, I don't think that you could as a viewer um, it would not be a waste of your time uh, to, in any way shape or form to, to go and at least have a look at what uh, what's available to you that, that Lily has done oh, thank uh, you. And, and, and made available again free of charge so um, 
thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for who you are. And, and, <laughs> Mark, my great you know. pleasure. You are such a dear friend. And I would just say a, a parting remark. Okay. Inspiration is everything. And as much as you can find that's as a resource and free and available, use it, take care of yourself. And remember that some of these decisions aren't going to have forever impacts. So don't be afraid to value yourself and reach out to resources that you need. So Mark, thank you for this opportunity. And um, this has been a great pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me too as well, Lily. You folks, uh, please do subscribe and um, so that you'll get to see many more interviews like this through Inspiring Business. Take care, everybody. Thank you. You've been listening to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. Thank you for your positive reviews, comments, and sharing this show with others. You can catch prior episodes on www.videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. 